Okay, welcome along. I'm not in my workshop today, just because I want to show you this this little beauty here, which is a bush. Let's see what the model number is. It's down in the back somewhere. It's a bush SRP 31C. And it's a sort of Danset style record player, multi changer from um, I'm guessing the 60s I need to uh, I need to really look that up and find out exactly where this is from but I bought this probably about 25 years ago um, and it was at a jumble sale I think I paid I don't know I think it was like five pounds or something I can't really remember now um, but it was incredibly cheap um, and well it worked straight away basically um, but then I kind of lost interest in it when I reached my late teens and I sort of put it away for a few years, many years. Uh, I dug it out about five years ago now and decided to restore it and uh, here's what I did. Okay, first thing that you have to do with these units is remove the E-clip from there, or C-clip depending what uh, you want to call it. Remove the platter and underneath here you've got the idler wheel is all rubber and that runs off the AC motor. Now the, the, the AC motor is a 50 Hertz motor and that basically means that the the speed of it is regulated by the 50 Hertz mains electricity. So there's no way of adjusting the speed. Thankfully the speed is actually pretty much spot on as it should be from you know when it was manufactured. So the thing that need doing on these units normally the motor bearings need lubricating the rubber, if it hasn't rotted, <laughs> will need a bit of cleaning and potentially uh, cleaning with uh, Rubber Renew, which is this fantastic product that I've uh, bought online from, I think it was either America or Canada, I can't remember, but it's, it's, it's by MG Chemicals and it's brilliant at restoring rubber idler wheels. Um, also, this here, which is the cam that controls the automatic start, automatic return and everything, this all needs lubricating, so again, you take the clip off here, you remove this entire wheel, you lubricate or clean and lubricate the, the groove that's underneath this, um, and you re grease it. You also grease the bearing here, the little ball bearings under there. Yeah, you can just about see them there. So that gets greased as well. Um, it's, yeah, it's looking very dirty, but and it has been a few years since I worked on this, but uh, it's still working perfectly at the moment. Um, so it's, yeah, it's greased up, cleaned and working. There's a few other things I did as well, which I shall show you in a moment. Just put that back. Now, the, the head shell on this, thankfully, is removable. So you just unscrew that and you oops, pull the head shell off. Now this is not the original cartridge. Will it focus? Yeah, just about. Now this cartridge I've put in now, this is a um, new old stock BSR X5M cartridge, which uh, the M means medium output. But it's, it's the nearest available um, cartridge I could find to the original, which is a high output crystal cartridge. And these high output crystal cartridges pretty much all fail um, by now. It's you just you won't find a working crystal cartridge, or <laughs> you'd be very lucky if you do. Um, so you have to use a ceramic cartridge like this one, the BSR X5M, very similar to the one I took out, except this one works perfectly. The original one was sounding so scratchy, and it would cut out constantly as you were playing records. Okay, so I fitted the uh, head shell back on now. This one has. As you can see, a flip over stylus. Um, I think the lighting in here is not. Uh, if I can just lower my exposure slightly, you should be able to see that the underside of the stylus there says 78. And you can flip that over, and that means that now you can play 78 RPM records on it. You can see the 78 on the side of the stylus there. So if you flip it over this way, it says LPs. So you play LPs, and there's two different sizes of stylus tip, basically. And the um, the LP side is a much finer tip 
for modern records and the 78 one is quite a wide tip for the uh, for the large grooves of a shellac record. Alright, now I've fitted the platter back on. We'll turn him on, lights up, very nice. Now I've got a large put my exposure back up a little bit. You've got a large elliptical speaker there, and you've got a tweeter mounted around about there. Uh, the tweeter is not working very well, it's a bit intermittent um, and it's very hard to find a replacement because it's not your standard sort of 8 ohm tweeter, this one's a little bit different. Okay, so as I was saying, the tweeter in this thing is not a regular uh, cone or dome tweeter, it's actually a Grundig electrostatic tweeter, which I mean, they haven't made these things in a very long time and if you buy one second hand the chances are it isn't going to work because it's going to be as old and as worn out as the one that you're replacing but, um, but yeah, the, the actual woofer, the elliptical speaker is working perfectly well it sounds absolutely great you've got underneath here some controls uh, you've got your on off and volume and you've got a bass and treble over there and believe me this thing has got ample amounts of bass it's fantastic sounding, it's a valve uh, or tube amplifier and you know anybody knows the valve amplifiers just sound absolutely lovely right so here's how we use it place the record on the spindle there drop that arm over so it sits as you can see it sits above the platter now you can stack many records on this or well, not many but um, I've got a stack of about uh, yeah, four, five that I can stick on there in any one go comfortably. These are not my best records, by the way. These are uh, old ones that I picked up in sort of uh, second-hand shops. Uh, they're mainly 50s and 60s, sort of rock and roll era, um, which kind of suits suits the unit really. So, put the record on. You make sure the arm is unclipped but sat on its own rest. Then. Push the switch on, then auto, and here's what happens. Stop it <laughs> before I get a copyright strike. <laughs> it seemed to have dropped it a little bit too far in the record there. Let's try again. All right, this is the second record. Now you can see the other, the other one's still on the platter, which is how these things are designed to work. So we'll start him up again, turn him on, auto. Come on, work. Perfect. So happy day. And of course I won't play any more of that. When you get to the end, it lifts it up, puts the arm back, and at that point it will switch itself off unless there's another record. If there's another record still stacked up on the top there, it will drop that and then start playing it until it reaches the last record and switches itself off after that. You have to take my word for it, the sound on it is absolutely fantastic. It's got plenty of bass. Um, I have fitted um, a new tweeter in since, uh, which is a standard sort of eight ohm tweeter, but I'm running it via um, a resistor, uh, which is and a capacitor, a crossover capacitor at about 3.2 microfarads, I think. Uh, tapped off the main woofer now instead of the electrostatic one, which was in there, because um, that was a, a high impedance thing that uh, actually took a relatively high voltage. Um, not off the speaker but off a separate part of the amplifier. Now this one is just a regular tweeter which I fitted in in the place of the old one. Um, unfortunately you can't see it because it's behind that panel there which I've fitted all back in now so uh, I don't fancy taking it all apart again. But yeah it's a lovely sounding unit this. Um, and also that badge was missing when I got it so um, unable to find the proper badge for it anywhere. Um, I found a photograph of one online, uh, enhanced it a little bit in Photoshop and printed it out on some high quality glossy photo paper. 
cut it out and glued it back on where the original would have been. So yeah, this has been the Bush SRP 31C Record Changer. I'm off to have a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching.